Kuzuzampo, welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program with me, Sunam Pem. Our top stories this week. His Majesty the King graces the opening ceremony of the sixth session of the third parliament. Study finds almost 40% rise in domestic violence cases in the country since COVID pandemic. And health experts say COVID cases may increase in winter. His Majesty the King graced the opening ceremony of the sixth session of the third parliament on Wednesday. The opening session was also graced by Her Majesty the Gelsen, along with Her Royal Highnesses Princess Sunam Dechen Wonchuk, Princess Chimi Yangzu Wonchuk, and Prince Jigil Ugen Wonchuk. Upon arrival at the Gelyong Tokong's courtyard, His Majesty was received in a traditional chibral procession by the Prime Minister, the National Assembly Speaker, the National Council Chairperson, the Opposition Leader and other members of the Parliament. The Speaker of the National Assembly, on behalf of the parliamentarians, expressed gratitude to His Majesty for gracing the ceremony and for tirelessly travelling across the country, sacrificing meals and rest to protect people from COVID-19. He also thanked His Majesty for establishing the Desung National Water Service and the Desung Skilling Program. <laughs> Sir the sixth session of the National Assembly will deliberate on eight bills including the Forest and Nature Conservation Bill, Fiscal Incentives Bill and the Goods and Services Tax Amendment Bill. The National Assembly will also deliberate on the Annual Anti-Corruption Commission Report 2020-2021 and ratify the Framework Agreement on the Establishment of the International Solar Alliance. The joint sitting will deliberate on the review report of the annual audit report 2020 along with the two performance audit reports of the Public Accounts Committee. The Prime Minister will present the state of nation including legislative plans and annual plans and priorities of the government during the joint sitting. The session of the Parliament will conclude on 25th December. For Sonam Tenzin, this is Cheku for BBS News. His Majesty the King granted Dar to appoint the Secretary General of the National Assembly at the Tashi Chazong on Tuesday. Tandon Sring is the new Secretary General. Before assuming the post, he worked as the Director General of the Department of Cottage and Small Industries under the Economic Affairs Ministry. He has Masters in Business Management from Thammasat University in Thailand. As per the Constitution, His Majesty the King appoints the Secretary General of the respective houses on the recommendation of the Royal Civil Service Commission. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to a surge in domestic violence cases across the globe, and Bhutan is no exception. As per a recent study, there has been an increase by almost 40% in domestic violence cases since the pandemic. The report was launched in Paro while observing the International Day of Elimination of Violence Against Women on Thursday. Her Majesty the Queen Mother Sangha Chodin Wongchuk graced the event. Her Majesty was accompanied by Her Royal Highness Princess Yufalma Chodin Wongchuk. To fight gender-based violence in Bhutanese homes, Her Majesty launched a series of resources including the Sexual Harassment Prevention Policy and the Druk Global Positioning System to trace women facing domestic violence. I was very concerned to learn that the domestic violence rate increase by almost 37% in our own communities. The revelation that our homes are not the safest place for many women and children is not only disturbing, but highly unacceptable. Her Majesty is the Goodwill Ambassador of the United Nations Population Fund. As per the Impact Assessment Report of COVID-19 on Women and Children, Majority of Bhutanese adults felt there was an increase in physical violence, followed by sexual violence and emotional and economic violence. However, the report revealed that the majority of the victims did not report the cases. 
According to the National Commission for Women and Children, cases go underreported as many perceive reporting domestic violence as a hassle. The Commission developed a mobile phone application to ease reporting of such cases and to enhance safety of women and children in need of protection. The app was also launched at the event. We have been having a lot of cases of reported sexual harassment uh, situations currently. There is nothing to be alarmed about. It is actually saying that people are aware and they are now started to come out and report. The event, which will be observed for 16 days across the country, will see activism against gender-based violence. It will conclude on 10th December, coinciding with the International Human Rights Day. For Namgyongchu in Paro, Bukgyem for BBS News. The South Korean government has conferred the Order of Diplomatic Service Merit to the former Secretary of the Works and Human Settlement Ministry, Tsein Chunorbu. It is one of the highest civilian awards of the Republic of Korea and is a relatively rare honor. It is usually awarded to foreign officials or ambassadors for significant contributions in strengthening friendly relations. Tsein Chunorbu is currently serving as a technical advisor of the Asian Forest Cooperation Organization. He completed his two-year term as the first executive director of the organization last year. The government procurement system is still being perceived as a major area of fraud and corruption, inefficiencies and wastage involving huge public resources. This is as per the Auditor General's advisory series on the review of the government procurement system. The report highlights that the current procurement process is restrictive to innovative solutions affecting the quality of goods and services procured. As per the report, government procurements constituted 40% of the government expenditures. In the last five years, more than 111 billion newton were spent on procuring goods and services. The Auditor General's advisory series says the procurement system is plagued with irregularities. As per the Annual Audit Report 2020-2021, irregularities incurred due to non-compliance to procurement norms alone were over 1.9 billion newton. Agencies has accepted poor quality products although it affected performances and made excess payments. Sometimes, goods were either not used or remained underutilized, wasting funds. For instance, the National Refer Hospital installed a chiller plant costing 27 million newton and it was not functional. It was later sold at scrap value of 240,000 newton. The RAA also observed that lowest bids were higher than the market price and the price for the same product varied among agencies. As per the report, all these were the result of weak policies. The RAA says the procuring agencies cannot opt for best quality at competitive rates since the bidding rates or price is determining factor in deciding the award of contract. The agencies are also encouraged to go for locally produced products without regard to quality. The authority also found agencies bought goods and services at the end of the fiscal year based on the availability of funds and not because of the actual requirement. Weak enforcement, accountability and sanctions, lack of professional capacity and limited use of the ICT-enabled procurement platforms also led to irregularities. The RAA says the Finance Ministry should revise the procurement rules and regulations and make it more efficient and responsive to changing market scenarios. For instance, the RAA recommends the procurement should be allowed through direct contracting so that they can get quality goods and services at lower cost. The RAA also recommends strengthening monitoring and supervision, promoting professionalism in procurement officials and increasing defect liability period based on value. Moreover, the authority emphasizes fixing accountability. Sangishizom for BBS News. The Finance Minister says the People's Democratic Party's press release on the misuse of the General Reserve is political propaganda. He says it is to disrupt and derail the function of the government. PDP accused the Finance Minister of recklessly using 19 million newton 
from the General Reserve to fund activities in Paro. As per the audit report, the General Reserve is an amount set aside to meet unforeseen, unavoidable, unexpected future expenditure or financial obligations that may arise during the financial year. According to the Annual Audit Report 2020-2021 submitted to the Parliament, the Finance Ministry transferred 19 million yutam from the General Reserve to meet the capital expenditure of Porozonkak in the financial year 2020-2021. The budget was used to maintain an irrigation canal, improve farm roads and construct a lums residence. PDP says this is political corruption where public finance has been abused for political gratification. The finance minister clarified that the Public Finance Act 2007 and the Financial Rules and Regulations 2016 authorized the Ministry to allocate additional budget through technical adjustment based on the request received from the budgetary agencies. The budget but the Royal Audit Authority in its report said in absence of a clear policy guideline regulating the use of funds from the General Reserve, the audit could not ascertain the legitimacy and admissibility of the transfer of funds from the General Reserve. Sangi Shuzong for BBS News. A herd of wild elephants destroyed nearly three acres of paddy fields in Norbugang Gyok in Samsi. Three farmers lost all their crops. The incident happened on Monday evening. One of the affected farmers is Kemraj Kale. He lost all the paddy on his one and a half acres of land in Diana. Kemraj said he would usually guard his fields, but on that day there was a power outage and rain at the same time. It was raining heavily and there was no power. That is why I didn't know that elephants had come. If I had known, the damage would have been less. This was my one year of hard work. Another farmer, Rohit, was growing paddy for the first time. And it was a bitter experience. I was going to harvest the crop soon, but I postponed after I knew that there would be rain. I would have been harvesting the paddy by today or tomorrow. The rice would have been enough for about eight months if not for the elephants. Mani Kumar Gale is another victim who lost all his crops. He was growing paddy on leased land since the beginning of the pandemic. Being a farmer, we have not heard anything about crop insurance. We come to know about it only when such incidents happen. Years of hard work have gone down the drain. Just when we were about to reap the benefits of our hard work, this happened. It is very discouraging. The Norbugang Gyok administration inspected the damage and submitted a report to the district agriculture office.
The paddy that they have been trying to grow here is a local variety and not something provided by the government. Locally, they call it nunia. It tastes good and is also expensive. Such type of rice variety normally takes a little more time to mature while compared to the ones that have been provided by the government. The farmers said this is the first time that the elephants have severely damaged paddy fields in Diana. It is located near the border. For now, the assessment report is forwarded to the Department of Agriculture and help will come on their way. But the problem of human-wildlife conflict is far from over. For Pasadoji in Samti, Sangishizom for BBS News. The residents of GCMG in Tonsa have started enjoying the benefits of 4G mobile network connectivity. The news came as a delight to about 80 households in the Georg who had been plagued with poor mobile network till now. The people of Jizam, Jipam, Jitrong and Semji area had to travel for hours to reach a place with good internet connectivity. Today, their lives have become much easier. For the past nine years, all online activities for schools, such as attending online meetings, were not possible. We travelled to Tongsa. We couldn't even make a call at times, but now with the tower installed here, everything is eased. We do not have to use Wi-Fi also. Their network issue was resolved after the Bhutan Telecom installed a new mobile tower at Chisum at the beginning of this month. Officials from the company said the installation of four additional towers is in the pipeline. The towers will be installed at Mangdipu, Langtil Dangdung, Ngada and Nyimjong Chiwok of Korfu Gewok. <laughs> The budget to install four towers next year is also approved. We are almost ready to procure the materials. The installation of such towers will ease the lives of the people of a few villages in Chiuk currently without 4G network. Installation of each tower cost about 4 million yutam. Bhutan Telecom plans to connect all geoks in Tongsa with 4G network by next year. For Pasa in Tongsa, who came for BBS News. A bite that is costing the country millions, but that might change. In a move towards making Bhutan self-sufficient in Doma and Pani, a group of entrepreneurs is buying most of the betel nut grown in Samsi. Today, farmers sell betel nuts to India. Despite growing enough, the country again imports at double the price. 29-year-old Parshuram Sharma, along with his two partners, started the Doma business earlier this year. While his partners look after the manufacturing and packaging unit at Paro, Parshu stays at Samsi and collects betel nut from the local growers. They have been storing it at the FCBL auction yard in Samsi for the last few months. Today, they are found digging out the fermented betel nut. It is then carefully counted and packed to be sent to Paro. The packaging team in Paro makes it ready for the market. The group currently sells one pound or 80 pieces of peeled betel nut for 413 newton in Paro in Thimpu. Our doma, uh, Brangi doma Dishti, mostly it gets sold to India. And then uh, later on, uh, when there is deficit, Nalu uh, Brangi doma Chaudalu, same doma comes up uh, to Brangi Lugdi, and then it uh, sells at a uh, increased price la. So uh, we are trying to nagi doma di naranyo tele na dubisa na rasong soni kila
However, the team is currently finding it difficult to sell their product in the import-driven market and people prefer the bigger betel nut from India. Next season would start by June, July next year. So if uh, next season na heavy be watching, if we are not able to sell, then uh, next season it's uh, practically we won't be able to sell this old domala. The group, however, is planning to seek help. If we want to be independent, we need to recognize this thing. Like, na do, ngachera ki bebe, ngachera zage se, ani chhi bechu ba chindi. First thing we, that's uh, where we start la. The other thing would be to. Uh, uh, if, if we could get some inter, uh, intervention from uh, the government agencies that uh, would help us. According to the Trade Statistics 2021, Bhutan exported betel nut worth some 80 million newton to India between April and June this year. But the report also shows that the country imported betel nut worth nearly 60 million newton in the same period. Parshuram Sharma and his two partners are trying to break this trend. The Samsi District Administration helped them get a loan of nearly 3 million newton through the National Credit Guarantee Scheme. The group today employs nearly 30 people in Samsi and Paru. If things work out well, the team also plans to expand the business and collect betel nut from other districts as well. For Pasangduji in Samsi, Chunitama for BBS News. The country has seen very few COVID-19 cases from the community and that too rarely. But with complacency setting in, experts fear that the next lockdown might be just around the corner. Health experts around the globe predict a steep rise in COVID cases this winter if people let their guard down. Winter is almost here. And winter in the country is associated with annual rituals and several festivals which encourage public gatherings. And this increases the risk of transmission. Whether it's COVID or other respiratory virus, the transmissibility is usually in a cold season. So, uh, of course, the COVID doesn't have any just no season like, because this is a new virus, so people have no immunity. So, I mean, if there is a transmission, uh, people will get infected. But actually, transmissibility is more high in the cold season because that is where the virus thrives. That is where virus can easily transmit fast. The Prime Minister's office, through its Facebook page recently, raised the alarm that another lockdown might happen anytime. According to the Post, towns and communities are witnessing larger and frequent gatherings with many disregarding basic safety protocols like wearing masks. Dr. Sunamonchu said people should be more cautious even if the restrictions are relaxed. He said the world is dealing with a contagious virus, the Delta variant of the coronavirus. And while people are vaccinated, they are still not safe. People should not really take for granted that we are vaccinated, we will not get infected, we will not get transmission, uh, they will not transmit it. We keep on saying that although you are vaccinated, transmission will be there. You will have the virus, you will be shedding the virus, you will be passing transmission. But vaccination will uh, no, protect you from severity in hospitalization. So I think it's a bit too early to really you know, uh, do away with all those safety protocols. With the virus still evolving and many countries struggling with rising cases, the risk of community transmission remains high. The Prime Minister's office urged people to avoid unnecessary gatherings and to continue to follow the health safety protocols amid the pandemic. Sunam Pem for BBS News. They feared the worst when their two sons went missing with the family car. They scoured the roads and even requested the police to search for their sons. Four days later, they found their sons alive and making hashish in an isolated place with three friends. They are all in custody now. Police in Tashiyatsi received a verbal complaint of two missing men aged 24 and 25 years from their parents on 4th November. Sources say the men went missing on 3rd November and their mobile phones were also switched off. Suspecting an accident, police and parents searched the roads in Tashiyatsi as there were no records of the car going beyond Tsergum police checkpoint. Sergum is between Tashiyansi and Chazam in Tashigang. Police received information about the car parked in Nyachi of Jamkar Giok on 5th November. However, the search was called off as it was already dark when they received the information. The next morning, the search team tracked for hours and found five individuals, including the missing men, rubbing marijuana to make hashish in Wuchilo. It is almost four hours walk from the road point. Police recovered some hundred grams of hashish from them. 
Sources said they have done shopping to last at least five days. There is also a minor among them, a 17-year-old boy. Police are investigating the case. For Sunam Dargi in Tashiansi, Sunam Pem for BBS News. Bhutanese usually go on pilgrimage to Nepal and India. But since last year, the pandemic has barred people from visiting the renowned pilgrim sites. And as domestic pilgrimage gains popularity, many sacred sites in the country are seeing a drastic rise in visitors. One such place is Rinchimbukpa of Kurte in Finsi. Unlike other sacred sites in the country, Shedrup Chakuling, commonly known as Rinchen Bumpa, is famous for its target-shaped mystical stone. Early morning, devotees would mistake the sacred relic for any other ordinary stone. But the magic happens when the first rays of the sun falls on it. The mantras appear as though the sun rays carved them. They are cut deep and their edges clearly visible. But surprisingly, they can't be felt. It lasts for about an hour and disappears. The stone is believed to be the archery target of Rahula, one of the supreme dharma protectors of Nyingma tradition. Although located about four hours' walk from the nearest road, Due to the sanctity of the place, on average, about 50 people, young and old, visit the site daily. However, sometimes hundreds of devotees visit the place, putting a strain on the limited facilities here. <laughs> Due to the increasing number of visitors, the Kurte Georg administration maintained the mule track more than five years ago. From a little over 1,000 in 2017, the number of visitors increased to about 4,000 last year. Initially, an individual from Minbi Georg constructed the present temple in 1957. However, since 2015, a tiku has been taking care of the temple. Today, there are seven monks headed by a principal. Meanwhile, it is believed that Guru Rinpoche visited the place and meditated in the 8th century. For Sonam Tsring in Flinsi, Cheku for BBS News. That's all we have for this week. Thank you for joining us.